Welcome to IDF TV. My name is Frank Infius and I'm from the Oracle J Developer and ADF Product Management Team. In this recording, which is the third out of four, we talk about error handling in Oracle IDF. And as you can see on the image here, there's a multi-layer error handling surface that we offer in Oracle IDF. In this session, I will talk about error handling on the task flow level. And on the task flow, of course, those errors that you can handle there are produced or caused by navigation or by Java code that is executed within the context of the uh, task flow handling or navigation, like the bounded task flow initializer or finalizer. Whenever there is an exception there, it will of course end up in the controller handler. To handle exceptions on the task flow level, there is a declarative approach which is to define one of the activities in the task flow as the error handling activity. Now that could be a view activity, a method activity, a router activity, and you do that by just selecting the activity that you want to become the error handler and just click the icon with the exhalation mark and that will then mark this as the view handler and the internal error handling mechanism in task flow will navigate the request or the, the response of a previous request to that error handling facility. Of course, going with a plain simple approach which is just to mark a page or a view as the error handler will kind of lead or move the user out of the context, which is not really what you want. Instead, what you want is try to solve the problem or report the problem, in which case it might be a better choice to use a method activity or a router activity as the error handler. On this image, you can see the configuration of a method activity as the error handler. And you can do this on the diagrammer, and you can also do this on the property palette as it's shown on the right hand side here. The slide here shows you some sample code of what the error handler could be if it's a method activity. Now the method activity in this case is just um, opening a dialog, just printing a faces message that reports the error as happened. And for this we look into the exception handler and we look into the stack trace to try to figure out what the problem is and if we can handle the problem we just show a dialog. The nice thing about this is that we're not taking the user out of the working context because they would just see a pop-up. Now how could that work if for instance that is in the course of a navigation? Well the reason why this works is that even within IDF controller navigation always happens from a view to a view and if there are routers or methods between then the view that you're on when you perform the navigation will stay as the actual view until a new view is rendered. And if there is an error somewhere on the, on the way to the new view, then the pop-up would show on the starting view, so actually navigation won't happen. And this is the principle after which the method activity works. But there's a lot more that you can do, not just the sample that I show here. With a router activity, I could look into the exception message and determine if I can handle it or if I have to route the user to maybe a view page where I say, okay, look, I can't recover from that. Maybe the database is no longer available. I can't recover from this error. If that happens again, just call that number or just write to this email address. So best practice is to always handle exceptions on the bounded task flow level. So every bounded task flow really should have an exception handler or an error handler. And the reason is that if you have nested task flow calls, if you just have task flow 1 calling task flow 2 and so on, then if further down, say task flow 4, there is an exception which is not handled, it will all bubble up and you end up with task flow 1, which is nice that you handle it, but actually from the user perspective, you've taken the user out of context and they will not see the page where actually the problem occurred. So best practice is work on a strategy, use a task flow template that defines the error handling capability of your application that you build so that every bounded task will have a consistent way of dealing with the exceptions. And then you decide based on the um, use case or on your program, you decide if that should be a view activity or if that should be a method activity or route activity. Now the default exception handler, that's in the framework. So the framework has a default exception handler and as soon as there is an exception happening, it's all passed on to that exception handler. And one of the exceptions it doesn't handle is those that happen during render response. So that is basically when navigation happened to the next view and during the flush of the view, if there is an exception in the managed beam, then the task flow is no longer in control 
which means that um, you have to try it yourself, be it on the view layer, as I will record on the fourth episode on this session, or you go and change the exception handler of the framework, which is really the last resort, and you shouldn't go this first, but there's an option for you to put in your own exception and try to handle the exception that is not handled by the default exception handler. And to do this, you create a class which exp extends the exception handler class, and then you put in uh, a file with a specific name, and you see the file on the slide, so it's Oracle IDF view rich context exception handler. And this is without extension, but it's a text file. And here, the full package name and class name of your default exception handler will go in there as a value. And then you save it up. You put this into a specific directory under the ADF slash meta inf directory. And you create a new directory called services. And that file has to go in there and then your file will be taken instead of the default ADF controller file. Now here is an example of the code that you can put into some files. So you see that it's extending the exception handler class and then it tries to handle the exception. And here the recommendation is if you can't handle the exception, if you look into the error message and you cannot uh, handle the exception, just rethrow the exception because now the Oracle controller exception handler will kick in and will take the handling and then you will have the default behavior. One thing that you want to keep in mind is that if you create your own exception handler, then this is on the framework level. It's not on the bounded task flow level. I cannot have an ADF library that contains a bounded task flow and put a specific exception handler in there. So either you override this for the whole application or just for um, a single bounded task flow, but then you have to do it on the error handler level and not on the exception handler level. So exception handler works for all and error handler just for one page. So that's the best recommendation to give. Use the custom exception handler as a last resort, not as the first attempt. Have a bounded task flow error handler activity in all of your bounded task flow. And most importantly is because Bugs, be it in an Oracle product or in your application, which then also is a product, don't fix itself. So you want to think about a strategy that allows you to report incidents based on the severity. So if there's a severe problem that you have within your application, you want to do incident reporting. So that is that you send an email, that you send a message of any kind to whoever is on duty to look at the server or just to look at the system and to maintain the system. Whereas if there's an error that you just need to report, but that is not really severe, you just want to lock this. So keep that in mind that the exception handler is not a mean of can I handle or can't I handle. It's also your responsibility to make sure that errors are properly locked. And if there is a serious damage to the system, that someone is notified. And keep in mind that there are weekends, that there are public holidays, so it could be that the decision process of who has to handle this is more complex than just one email address. So you may want to consider something that is made for that, like service-oriented architecture, like BPM or any kind of orchestration that can go with asynchronous processing or sequential processing. So keep that in mind when you look at error handling because that proves pretty useful. And it's also used internally at Oracle, by the way. Unbounded task flows. Now I talked about error handling and um, I said that the bounded task flow could have a default error handler. And what I didn't uh, mention is that for the bounded task flow, I could have the error handler in a library. So instead of putting the error handling capability in every bounded task flow itself, I could have a library, an ADF library, which is a task flow template. And this task flow template defines the error handling um, definition. And then for every bounded task flow that I built based on that task flow template, it will inherit the uh, error handling capabilities there. And that's one way to um, enforce consistency. The unbounded task flow, however, cannot be built based on the task flow template. However, there's a strategy to share how you can enforce consistent error handling for unbounded task flows across your applications. And the trick here is that you build a view controller project that uses idea faces and the task flow controller functionality and you keep the ADFC config file as a name. You just make sure that you have a 
unique naming in the package structure so that you're not conflicting with the ADFC config file and the applications that inherit your library that you're going to create. So you create a view controller project with a unique naming. You use the ADFC config file and in this ADFC config file you define a view handler uh, or a method handler or a router uh, handler to handle the error. Yeah? So the same as I said before and as I had on the image, you just click the icon and mark this as the error handler. And then you add the library to the assembling application. So if you follow the uh, uh, more complex architecture recommendations from ADF-TV like the pillar architecture, uh, the cylinder architecture, then you put the library into the assembly application and then it will be read in first and then if there is no other error handler defined, it will be used. So that is a way where you can use a library approach even for unbounded task flows. So exceptional handling Strategy, as mentioned, use an error handler template for bounded task flow. Um, use the ADFC config file to configure error handling on the unbounded task flow level. There's no excuse really to have no error handling. And as you can see on that slide, the loading order uh, of the task flow definition files is that the ADFC config file found in the library is found first. And for that reason, it will implement its error handling over the one that you would specify otherwise for each of the applications. And that concludes the third session on error handling and I talked about the controller facilities. I respect that there is a lot of information I shared so you might want to rewind and I also recognize I'm speaking quite fast here but there's a lot of stuff for me to cover. Next one is the last session and that is about the ADF view layer and error handling there.